Hello friends, welcome to the Engineering Funder family. In this video, I will discuss M2M and IoT networks with a more specific focus on the basics of M2M networks and key concepts. Let's begin this session with the first agenda item. What are the meanings of IoT and M2M networks? To understand this, first I will discuss the general idea of what IoT and M2M networks are. See, both provide remote access between devices. So both IoT and M2M provide access to information without human intervention. Here, in both cases, whether it's IoT or M2M, devices will share information with each other. So first, I will explain to you what the basic meaning of an M2M network is. See, when it comes to M2M networks, they provide direct communication between individual machines or devices. These are designed for devices to communicate with each other for a specific purpose. So here, in the case of M2M, the purpose is specific. Here, the network will be limited, right? Then the application will also be specific. You can say that this is why it is proprietary work, right? When we discuss IoT, we are generalizing our application at that time, and it has broader aspects. Let me define IoT here. So if I talk about what IoT is here, IoT is a broader concept for internet communication between devices. Here, M2M is not a broader concept. Here, limited devices will communicate with each other. But in IoT, we have a broader concept for internet communication between devices. It involves a wide range of devices, sensors, actuators, and applications that communicate using the internet. So in IoT, we have a broader network. Here, we will use the internet for communication with multiple applications. Whereas in M2M, devices are also communicating with each other. But its purpose is specific, right? See, in M2M as well, we are using the internet. It's not that we are not using the internet in M2M. But the purpose is specific, the network is limited. Whereas in the case of IoT, the purpose is broad. Where a variety of devices, a variety of sensors and actuator applications are communicating using the internet, right? So M2M uses non-IP based proprietary networks, although at last you can also do IP based communication, but it is used for proprietary networks. Whereas in the case of IoT, we are using broad network protocols based on IP. All right, that's how things are with IoT and M2M. Now I am going to explain to you about the architecture of the M2M network. Now I am going to explain to you about the M2M architecture as well as its basic building blocks. So first of all, you need to understand what an M2M area network is like. Look, in an M2M area network, there will be machines. So here is an M2M area network in which these machines are interconnected with each other and connected with different types of protocols. Here is a second M2M area network where these machines are interconnected. Now the basic interaction between machines here is possible through the use of communication protocols. For example, in this area network, these machines can interact with each other using some basic protocols such as Bluetooth, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, NFC. These are the protocols that we use here for communication between these machines, right? But this M2M area network device and that M2M area network device cannot communicate with each other directly. To establish such communication, we need an M2M gateway. So the M2M gateway acts as an intermediary node. With the presence of this M2M gateway, translation of protocol data becomes possible. For example, suppose communication here is happening via Bluetooth and over here it's happening via Wi-Fi. So there is a protocol difference. So direct communication here is not possible. That's why this M2M gateway will work like a translator, right? After the M2M gateway, there will be the M2M core network. See, this M2M gateway will translate the data provided by the device and send it to the M2M core network. This M2M core network can be either wireless or wired, right? Here, after the M2M core network, there will be the M2M application at the end. Look, in the M2M application, all categories of tasks such as maintenance, upgradation, and service, right? At this M2M application stage, there will be a client application where the client can provide a variety of services to all these devices. And here, look, in this given M2M network, these devices can communicate with each other. 
But as soon as these devices are interested in communicating with another M2M network, the M2M gateway will play an important role here and all application handling will take place on the client application side. So this is its basic architecture picture, right? Now I am going to explain to you what an M2M gateway is and what its basic necessity is. See, the M2M gateway acts as an intermediary between various devices and systems that are present in a machine-to-machine -machine setup. I told you that we have an M2M area network, right? So within that M2M area network, the devices can communicate with each other. But if one M2M area network wants to communicate with another M2M area network, then in that case, you will need an intermediary node, which will be the M2M gateway. See, this gateway provides the following functionalities that you should know about. See, it provides communication between machines and offers connectivity for this purpose. It also enables data exchange between machines and provides compatibility between different networks. The reason for this is that it is quite possible that one M2M network will use one protocol while another M2M network will use a different protocol. So here, compatibility needs to be provided between different networks. Now, I am going to explain to you what the basic purpose of an M2M gateway is, right? To understand this, you need to realize that within a network, nodes can communicate with each other. But to communicate with a remote M2M area network, an M2M gateway is highly required, right? So basically, when it comes to the M2M gateway, you should know that there needs to be translation from one M2M area network to another M2M area network. So here, there can be connectivity issues, data exchange issues, and compatibility issues, right? So all these issues are being resolved on the M2M gateway side. Now, I am going to explain the structure of the M2M gateway to you. As I have explained, the M2M gateway is used for communication between two different M2M area networks. But how it will happen? For this, you need to understand the basic architecture. As I told you, in an M2M area network, there can be various protocols such as Bluetooth, ZigBee, 6 Lopan, MBus, MWB, Modbus, and Z-Wave. Similarly, there can be many types of protocols in the M2M area network, right? And within the given area, all the nodes can communicate with each other. But if we have different M2M area networks, for example, if one node wants to communicate with another node and the other node is using a different protocol, then in such a case, the M2M gateway comes into the picture. So here, the M2M gateway will act as an intermediary node. You can observe here, you can also call it a virtual node where it will work like a proxy node performing protocol translation. For example, if one node here is using the Bluetooth protocol and the second node is using a protocol based on UWB, then through the proxy node on the M2M gateway, we will perform protocol translation, right? Once the protocol translation is done, we will provide it to the M2M wide area network through IP routing. And after that, it will go to the application from where commands can be issued again, right? From the client application, commands can again be released. And these commands will come here according to IP routing and can be given to another node that is in a different network, right? So let's summarize what an M2M network is. See, when it comes to M2M networks, this is a fundamental concept of IoT, but IoT has broader aspect of communication. IoT is a broader concept where many applications are integrated with the use of the internet. Whereas in the case of M2M, it is purpose specific. Here we are talking about limited applications, right? Whereas IoT is a broader concept. In IoT, there will be many networks, many devices, many sensors, actuators, and a lot of data. Whereas in M2M, we have specific applications. So M2M is a fundamental component of IoT, right? You can say that IoT is a broader concept for device communication, right? So M2M is the backbone of IoT applications. So as soon as you understand how an M2M network is formed, and as soon as multiple M2M applications are combined together, you can say that this will form an IoT network, right? I hope this video has been beneficial for you. And if you have any queries, please post them in the comment box. I will be happy to help you.
Thank you so much for watching this video.